Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History, and uh, I'm starting this morning with uh, 1924, the birth of Nigeria's first military head of state, uh, Major General Johnson Thomas Munakwe Agui Ironsi. He was born on this day, March 3rd, 1924, and of course died in 1966 um, on 29th of July. He was the first military head of state and of course he seized power amidst the struggle and the chaos that occurred after the uh, January 15th, 1966 military coup. He ruled uh, from uh, 16th of January uh, um, when he uh, seized power until his assassination in um, July 1966 by a group of of course, northern, as they described, northern Nigeria officers and men led, and this is the interesting part, by Murtala Mohammed, and of course included um, Captain Theophilus Danjuma, Lieutenant Mohamedou Buhari, Lieutenant Ibrahim Babangida, and Lieutenant Sani Abacha in a revolt against his government in what was called the July counter coup. Um, of course, uh, the challenge that Agu Yeronsi had really with that coup and the way that it was described was the fact that none of the high-profile victims in the 1966 coup, the initial one in the 15th of January, were um, of Igbo extraction. And so that created controversy and made it seem like it was an Igbo uh, coup. Um, of course, many, many of the beneficiaries of the coup also were Igbo. Um, Agui Ronsi, in the time that he was, of course, in power, put into law the decree number one, which suspended most articles of the constitution. Um, he left those who, of course, that dealt with fundamental human rights, though, um, freedom of exp expression and conscience, those ones were left intact. He also put forward decree number two, which removed the restrictions on press freedom. Um, defamatory and offensive decree number 44 of 1966, which he also put forward, made it an offense to display or pass on pictorial representations, sing songs or play instruments uh, of the, uh, the words of which are likely to provoke any section of the country. So... Uh, maybe, you know, we, we started talking about hate speech um, um, back then in 1966, but that was his, um, his um, form of the hate speech um, ban. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in 1966, uh, um, in July, he spent the night with, um, uh, what's his name now, um, Fajui, yes, um, somewhere in Ibadan government house. And of course, that was where he eventually lost his life. Uh, sometime that night, Fajui had warned him that there was likely to be a counter coup. He tried to reach his chief of army staff back then, Yakubu Gowan, uh, Gowan, but he couldn't. The next morning, the house was surrounded by Theophilus Danjuma and the other officers that I had earlier mentioned. Agui Ronsi eventually lost his life later that day um, in July 1966. But he was, of course, and I, like I said earlier, he's one of those names that would never uh, leave Nigeria's history books um, because of the role that he played and the controversy surrounding his, um, his uh, presence, basically, and, uh, as the first uh, military head of state uh, back then in 1966. This was all before the war. And Oof, all that drama. Interesting fact about Agui Ironsi, uh, Nigeria's uh, uh, former military head of state. Uh, moving on now to March 3rd, 2013. Uh, I mentioned earlier that this was a medical breakthrough that was recorded this day in history. A two-year-old U.S. girl became the first child born with HIV to be cured. The baby was given high doses of three antiretroviral drugs within 30 hours of her birth. Now, the doctors knew that her mother was HIV positive, And, of course, there's the uh, mother-to-child transmission of HIV uh, infection. So because they knew, knew the fact that the mother was HIV positive, they administered the antiretroviral drugs with the hopes of controlling the virus, uh, since you know it's transmissible by blood. Now, two years later, there was no evidence of HIV in the child's blood. Researchers believe that the key to that was early intervention and the fact that they administered that you know anti-retroviral drugs, uh, that that was the key to the outcome uh, you know of her HIV negative status. And she's now uh, declared functionally cured of HIV. And if functional cure is a situation where the presence of a virus is so small that it cannot actually be detected in the blood. Uh, clinical tests cannot detect the presence of the virus. And lifelong treatment for that disease, it's no longer necessary. So the doctors were based in Mississippi. Uh, you know, they made medical history, like I said, with that functional care. They never mentioned the name of the child. They never mentioned the child's, you know, gender to protect the child's identity. Uh, more than 300,000 babies are born with HIV infection around the world each year. And uh, the good thing is that the number of babies born with HIV in developed countries has dramatically fallen. 
And that's uh, because of the advent of better drugs, better prevention strategies. You know, typically, women who have HIV and that are pregnant are given these uh, antiretroviral drugs during pregnancy to minimize the amount of the HIV virus in their blood. And their newborns also you know, go on courses of drugs to reduce their risk of infections. And that strategy, you know, if you're pregnant and have HIV, you take antiretroviral drugs, yes. and the child immediately when born you know, gets antiretroviral uh, treatment. That can reduce the, the child's uh, likelihood of getting HIV by about uh, 98%. You know, chance. So that's what happened today in history, 2013. Right. A child was functionally cured of HIV. I like the, the part where you mentioned uh, the possibility of fighting it if it is detected uh, early enough. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I know we talk about HIV, what HIV things first of December, but it's a quick reminder to everyone to get tested. Um, you don't need to wait till you're falling sick and you're, you know, losing or weight. You're about to you know, get married exactly. and your husband or wife is about to get married. For a you know, test. or you get into a new relationship and they say, "Oh, the only way we can is if we both get tested." Um, everyone should get tested. I'm not. I, I can't say maybe once or twice a year, but get tested. Yes, just if get you tested. haven't in the past, get tested, and it's easier for you to fight it and to defeat it if you detect it early. Magic Johnson, you know, had, you know, survival story also from um, HIV. It's one of the people, that, oh, they always refer to that, oh, you, he beat HIV. But it's early detection, it's always the key. Drugs it's always and, the key and those to things treatment, treatment early detection of anything. And HIV, HIV tests are free. Yep. I mean, I, I got one a few about free, months ago. But Sorry? <laughs> I don't know about free, no, because when I did mine, it wasn't free. Okay, I took um, mine at a, at a primary healthcare center. Okay. So okay. maybe that's why, maybe if you go to private clinics, you might have to pay for that. Yeah. But, you know, the first time I went there, they said they didn't have the equipment, they didn't have what they needed to use. Yeah. I was sick again, I went back then, I was like, okay, you need to take a HIV, te HIV test. They had the equipment, and I, and I took the test for free. So yes, right. do know your HIV status, early detection is key. To treatment. And don't die from heart attack before they give you the result. It might, <laughs> it might just be negative. All right. Yes, and even though we know that HIV can be spread through other means, uh, you know, apart from sexual intercourse, try, All right, try so, abstinence. You know. So happy be birthday. Like, be like Osawa again, and I. <laughs> Posthumous yeah. uh, birthday to uh, Agui Ronsi. Uh, he was born today, March third, nineteen twenty-four, and of course uh, died sometime in July, nineteen sixty-six. Yes, so yes, that's it, uh, March 3rd, 2013. Uh, doctors in the United States achieved medical history by functionally curing a child of HIV. That's all we have for you today in history. When we come back from this short break, we're moving straight into our first major conversation of today. President Mohamed Buhari, of course, has given orders to ensure that kidnappings of that magnitude or even any magnitude never happen again um, in Nigeria. Of course, uh, celebrating also the release of the 279 schoolgirls in Zamfara State. We'll talk about it after this break. <laughs> 